Welcome back to the Win With Dice podcast, a podcast featuring members of the Win With Dice team. I'm Calvin, and I'm joined here by Ramon. Hey guys, is this your first time listening to the Win With Dice podcast? This is the podcast where we talk about tabletop RPGs, running them, playing them. Calvin and I like to take a casual approach to GMing, and uh, on this channel, we like to talk about, or I guess not on this channel, but on this podcast. Oh, uh, we like to talk about, yeah, like everywhere, uh, <laughs> all throughout our lives, uh, all the time. That's what we do. Uh, <laughs> we like to talk about the games that we play in, the games that we run in, all the cool stuff that we learn from our friends and we learn from each other. So, yeah, we just want to, you know, show you that the uh, hobby is super fun and the other side of the GM screen is super fun and, and you know, rewarding to jump behind. So, you know, if uh, if you have an, uh, any uh, questions or any uh, thoughts about that, you can put it in the comments below and I'll stop rambling now. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's the show. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. We take a chill approach to GMing, so hopefully, you know, it's easier to give it a try if you're nervous about it uh so we do have some games to talk about we have a lancer game uh there's also a pathfinder game we'll see if we can get both into the episode um they were both very interesting and um one of them i ran on a stream the other me and ramon are players in um and we've talked about it before the lost might of tim telfer <laughs> um but before we get into recapping all that fun stuff we have to get to the most important part of the show the win with dice weekly gm tip of the week Ah, yes, the Wood with Dice Weekly GM Tip of the Week, brought to you by Calvin. Thanks, Calvin. <laughs> you know, I missed you doing that last week. I had to do it myself, and I don't think it was as, I don't know if it was as good. <laughs> Honestly, it's the only thing I actually do well in the show. I can never get the intro right, first off. <laughs> like, I don't know what it is, if it's nerves. I mean, we've done so many episodes, but I, I can never do the intro the same way. <laughs> I don't know. It stresses me out. But hey. <laughs> I get it. I totally get it. Uh, but for this week, um, so something that came up in the Lancer game is just... Obviously, when you're playing a game that's dice-based, where there's random chance for things, or even card-based, or anything that involves random chance, some element is going to, going to come up. Some story element, some, I don't know, attack in a combat situation, some role in a skill check... Just something in the narrative is going to happen that you, as the person running the game, are not going to expect. And it doesn't necessarily have to come from a player, although it often does. Uh, but in those moments, you might feel like, I mean, I know <laughs> in that moment, which we'll go into more detail later, I kind of felt like, is this going to throw off everything that I ever made for this entire game? Uh... <laughs> But on some level, I think you need to be able to, you just need to trust yourself a bit more. And I know that's easy to say. Uh, it's easy to say certainly after the fact. But you can trust yourself and trust your players to get through those sudden and unexpected moments. Because at the end of the day, everybody's there to have fun and play a game together. So usually, as is the case, I mean, everybody wants everybody else to have fun. If you're in a group where that's not the case, then you have far other problems than just rolling a number you didn't expect but I, I would I would say that normally people just want to have fun with everybody together and if something unexpected comes up that's part of the fun that's part of the story that you all create together that's part of the unexpected element that creates like a new memory uh, or a new story that you'll be talking about for weeks and months to come hopefully yeah for sure for sure like always try to go with the flow I mean that's where the drama is right like you as a GM that's where the that's where the fun is for the GM is to see you plan out all this nonsense and you the fun is to see what the players do with it and usually they wreck it and that's <laughs> that's just how it is <laughs> right but uh, yeah no uh, I get, totally go with the flow totally build that drama and your table will love it and uh, I think that like every time we never talk about when the plans like all, all the fun stories I remember from you know being a player it's never when the plans go exactly as you know as we planned it out right it's it's when things fall apart and we have to like cobble together this this salvage the situation yep. and uh you know things go from like the frying pan into the fire kind of thing and then you know we ended up victorious or maybe we all lost but uh it was still fun to to mess around like that so yeah okay, cool there you go folks that's your women dice weekly jam tip of the week just go with the flow groovy so let's get into this Lancer game, which I had streamed over on the Untold Stories Project channel, on their Twitch channel. 
uh, which of course is going to be linked below. Uh, you might be able to catch the VOD there for a bit and it'll be on their YouTube channel uh, hopefully sometime soon. Um, and it was the third part of a one-shot, I guess. I don't know if it's really a one-shot or a... Uh, they've been using the term limited series over there because yeah, this always yeah. happens. I mean, it's... Well, I mean, also the the uh, parameters of a Lancer mission usually involves, like, more than one combat. Um, just... just it, It's just how it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you, you uh, that I think the limited series is showcased, like, one mission uh, for, like, license level three, I think we were, right? Yes. Calvin? Or license level two. Just... Uh, no, LL2. Um, just LL2. high enough. No, yeah, it would be two. Just high enough that you can get a unique frame. So that would be two. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Just because I wanted everyone to not be using the same GMS frame because I wanted some more variation, which uh, <laughs> turned out very explosive in the end. Uh, so to recap where we were, um, and this is a game we talked about a couple episodes ago. The players were uh, working with Union, uh, helping out this planet that had recently joined Union. Uh, but they were dealing with some pirates who were attacking a orbital terraforming station on a nearby moon. Um, during that pirate attack, though, some ancient computer was un uncovered, unsurfaced, from beneath the surface of the moon, and it took over the terraforming station, and it was using that terraforming station to sort of protect itself, but that was also causing it to crash into the actual planet below. So, where we started off was the players arriving in what was planned to be the final combat of this situation. Um, you might have seen the original map from it if you'd seen the stream previously. Uh, I updated the map, it looks a whole lot better. Um, I'll probably stick a picture of it in here if I can find one. Um, but basically what it was is this crater on the moon itself with four circuitry electronic pillars just kind of sticking out of it. Uh, these exposed conduits were um, originally intended just to be something that the players had to destroy while dealing with the pirates, but the players decided they would rather, instead of increasing the violence, which had made the situation worse in the first place, uh, they were going to instead try to calm this device down. So back on the Union ship, where some of the uh, where they had originally rescued several scientists who were originally part of this terraforming project. Um, they were sort of figuring out a way to communicate with these conduits and calm down this ancient computer before it crashed into the planet below. So you were basically stalling for time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I, I thought it was, I mean, I know that like players were, players typically are like, yeah, let's do the violence. It seems to be the easiest <laughs> way. Uh, but, you know, I, I think it was because you explained to us like the, it was kind of like a defense mechanism. And yeah. it's like, I feel like and we're all like, I think this thing just wants to be left alone mostly. So it doesn't really feel right to try and like, you know, attack it but just because it doesn't know what it's doing. And, you know, I think like as a player, I might have come to the same conclusion. But I, <laughs> I don't know my I don't know why my GM brain was just like, OK, here's uh, some other objectives for you to deal with. And that's that. And not considering like the actual narrative that I created with this thing. But uh, yeah, so you all came in. There was a bunch of pirates and there were four things that you needed to protect from the pirates while clearing them out. Uh, we were down a player. So that character was just kind of like off screen covering one of the directions that enemies could come in. Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, if you guys, I th what, what was the ep was it the last episode we did where we talked about um, like help? I, I, I we did like a I guess a triage of like what what did you want to fix for the this? Uh, yeah, that combat. was a couple episodes ago. Yeah. Okay. Because we we spoke about how like you know you wanted like reinforcements to come in, and I was like, I, I think I gave the suggestion of like all those flying units because you know we already know the pirates already have like. The capability of transporting units to the battlefield right mm -hmm. yeah yeah and that and that is something uh i did eventually in the battle um part of your suggestion if you guys go back and listen to that episode there's a lot of stuff that i took from it uh some that i didn't get to uh and some that i might have remixed a bit that you might see in the future yeah it, it, i think it'd be cool to to kind of see what well, I, I was there, but for all the you could go watch it. You watch our other episode after this one, then you go watch the VOD, and then it all makes sense. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. To be fair, that was like three weeks ago, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 
so yeah, we started off with the battle. Uh, players were arriving. There was a crew of pirates there. Um, so the players themselves, I guess I could describe them. Um, there was, of course, Duke, who you were playing. Um, Duke, Duke, Duke the sixth, by the way. <laughs> Uh, the, the 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 higher the numbers, the nicer they are. Uh, that's that's what I'm going. With. Oh, is that what Duke it Prime, is? Duke Prime is the most evilest one out of all of us. Well, I guess I would say evil, but like the most ruthless, I guess. And then as as like the Dukes kind of go uh, up, uh, then the Dukes get like chiller and chiller and more good guy Duke. Except for Duke number thirteen, uh, he's he's he might be the worst. I don't know. <laughs> I am fascinated. He's, he's secretly the best. <laughs> <laughs> I need to see the Duke line. The Duke yeah, lineage. I think Duke number 13 might be the Dark Knight. Like, maybe he's like, I feel like he's going to be like, you know, um, oh, I forget that dude. Uh, he's always blonde from Gundam. He's always blonde. He has the helmet on and he always like pilots the tall geese. Ugh, I forget his name. Uh, I but he's Gundam. always like the bad guy, but he's also like the coolest bad guy. That's probably what Duke number 13 will be. Anyway, let's, I don't want to stop. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I'm, I, I want to know more about Duke when we get there. But yeah, Duke's uh, piloting a Nelson uh, for all the Lancer people out there. Uh, additionally, there was call sign Empress, who was piloting a Tokugawa, uh, who got into some, let's say, explosive action. Uh, Free Shooter was the player that we were missing, so she was off screen, like just sniping dudes down. Uh, Hellion uh, in a Blackbeard, doing some grappling and slashing action. And Longhorn in a Raleigh, our, uh, <laughs> the cowboy of the team, because every team needs a cowboy. Every team does need a cowboy. <laughs> so the players rock up, they're facing a. I guess the specifics aren't really... Well, it's a Cataphract, it's a Bombard, and an Ultra Demolisher. And that was largely what the intended fight was going to be when I made the first draft of it. Um, and I thought, because I was I was adhering to like a very specific like calculation, but I hadn't calculated in like backup and things like that, or reinforcements, rather. Um, so I was like, okay, this number of people and this number of structures is probably fine, right? I think I figured out the math on that or whatever. But I wasn't considering like roles and randomness and what would actually be fun. So after we had our discussion episode, um, you had suggested that I bring in some reinforcements based on like, you know, the enemies I've used before. So I had some in reserve, just a couple of the aces that I used before and one of the assaults, but the assault was beefed up slightly. Um, I think elite is the one that gives it one new structure. I forget the specific thing, but it's the one that gives it one new yeah. structure. Yeah, it's elite. Uh, yeah, it would be elite. Yeah, but that one didn't come out right away. Um, I basically had the idea to plan out this fight in stages, essentially. So the players arrive, and uh, I don't need to give like a specific play-by-play, -play, but they do arrive, they start fighting the pirates. The Demolisher got messed up pretty badly, actually, because it did get grabbed yeah. by Hellion, and then was just getting wrecked by Hellion and Empress, and was not rolling yeah. very well. Uh, it did have some... <laughs> Um, difficulties. <laughs> I was to gonna say, say like, it, the, yeah, like the immediately at like the first kind of interactions where like Hellion saw the big dude and was like, yeah, we're gonna dance, kid, <laughs> and just like, I'll be having know, that. Black, yeah, Black Bear power activate and was just like grappling the shit out of this giant mech, and then Empress piloting uh, a. Ooh, uh, I was going to say Napoleon. That's not no. what it's called. At Tokugawa, yeah. you know, immediately was like, it's time to burn. <laughs> and uh, just started pumping all of the energy and burn weaponry straight into this poor, poor man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, how much HP does that thing even have? Oh, uh, it was uh, an ultra. <laughs> yeah, it's got like 20 and it had four oh my... <laughs> structures. Oh. oh my God. People blaze through like 60, 80 HP. Yeah. Because he couldn't Dang, really do man. much, and he was grabbed, and he was getting some bad rolls. When he did get a good hit in, um, it was pretty significant. It was, like, at least 10, if I recall correctly, when he did get a decent hit on Hellion. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> he did miss a lot. That's true. I mean, that kind of shows you that, like, you know, Blackbeard is is definitely a skirmisher, but it, it also, like, 
I guess I should say it's also really good at locking people down because I think immediately uh, we activated the harp, the Omni Harpoon, and uh, it failed the agility roll, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a big this, chunk this big old chunky mech failed an agility roll. How? Yeah, how? Right? I mean, <laughs> he couldn't dodge. Like, <laughs> but yeah, so like he was already on the ground, and the Tokugawa is the ability to just you know, you push your systems to the max. And uh, you know, burn out your reactors just to become like a just a supernova, man. Just melted this dude. It was hilarious because um, your armor wasn't. I think he had like three armor too. It was like lots, right? Like, yeah, they had a decent yeah, amount of armor, but, but that Tokugawa, I think, is the one that had the armor piercing. Yeah, it was crazy the amount of like synergy that was there. <laughs> I was like, oh, I see why we're the professionals now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it is giving me ideas of like different things I should try because I didn't lean very much into like tech attacks and stuff with the characters yeah. that I made. Um, like there was that one- That would have blown yep. all of us up, by the way. Like three out of the four of us were running uh, 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 North Star systems, right? North Star mechs. So like our tech, like her, our tech saves are just like not not their friend. Like yeah. you would, are we running like you know Windows ninety eight? Like we were <laughs> getting like wrecked so bad. Yeah, it would have been so awful. <laughs> when I oh made these gosh. characters, I tried to have like a balance of like, you know, the different like controller and striker and all that. Um, but yeah. everyone kind of didn't seem to like everyone kind of leaned away from all the more tech based stuff. Apparently, I don't know if they I, came I off as just... too complicated or if it's just the other characters were more interesting. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, not even, not even that. I mean, like, I just think that, yeah, like, if you think of like a big robot, the coolest thing is like, you know, smashing the crap out of people. In my opinion, like, the yeah. tech stuff is cool, but I think that like the draw of the game is like, at least to me, it's like the big guns and the big swords and the, you know, the super boosters and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I feel like people focus a lot on firepower more than like I'm gonna be. The, the smart dude in the back like you know what i mean fair enough at least that's that's just for me no one picked know. any of the horus mechs yeah I... <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure um but yeah no and then duke uh what, i like that what i appreciate after like doing the limited series was i think by like this combat everyone kind of figured out what their roles were yeah you know what i mean like which I thought, like, oh, man, I love that moment when the, the party comes together, right? And um, I think we all kind of vote. I, I'm not sure in your pilot descriptions, because we all use pre-made pirate pilots, except for myself, but um, where you kind of describe them and give them kind of personalities and stuff like that that the players were kind of uh, uh, running off of, right? Mm -hmm. So I know um, Hellion. I was like, what's... what's Helen, Helen ended up being our captain just because, like, I don't know. I think she was the, the coolest character by far. <laughs> yeah. She was the first one that I made and was probably one of my favorites. Yeah. So Helen, uh, being the badass she is, became our de facto leader immediately. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, I did like being, like, I guess not, like, second in command, but, like, I like the idea that Duke and Helen were, like, like right before the combat, Helene was like, Duke, what are you going to do? And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to go deep. And she's like, all right, don't worry. I'm going to tackle the big dude. <laughs> and then we just split up immediately. Yeah. And so uh, I thought that was kind of cool. Because you went after like the bombard and there was actually another Rainmaker grunt that I just threw in there. Uh, just as an annoying thing. <laughs> Fucking got me again. Like I used up <laughs> so much effort to attack this grunt. But you know, you, you never tell me that. It, like, I know you said that, oh, this looks familiar. And I legitimately <laughs> forgot that we fought a Rainmaker grunt before. So I just like, you know, pressed all the buttons and just like, you know, did like 12 damage to this thing. And then it's like, well, it only had one HP. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I wouldn't have tried so hard. I <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want, I'm, part of me is wondering if I should have like not made it a grunt, but I don't think that would have mattered for what you did on your first turn. <laughs> No, it, it would have made me feel better. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> um, so yeah, Duke's going Shit. after the long range guys. Um, what was the call? Longhorn was sort of hanging back a bit at the edge of the crater, uh, helping deal with the cataphract who was trying to help out his demolisher buddy. And the fight was going sort of back and forth like that for some time. 
Yeah, until until I'm pretty sure uh, the Catafact tried to like, I think the Catafact was able to like uh, get one of us. Oh, he, he grappled Hellion. Yeah. And but that was pretty much it. It really did. And then uh, Longhorn rocked up and just shot the crap out of him. <laughs> he was like, oh, I had bullets in the chamber. Let me un- offload on this dude. And then this dude did not make it. No. Uh, through the onslaught of just like getting freaking you know blitzed by a Raleigh, uh, which makes sense. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he did get his lunge attack in on Hellion, but in the end, didn't really have anything to deal with Longhorn's ranged attacks. Uh, yeah, it was pretty. It's pretty futile, unfortunately. Cat. I mean, cataphracts. I've also used cataphracts before, and like sometimes they're really scary, but most times they're not. Like I don't. I don't know. I don't know if I know how to use them yet. Like, yeah, but I mean, like everything has right. optional systems and stuff, right? So there might be some yeah. good system combination in there. Uh, yeah. I was just thinking this guy would be like maybe darting around a bit and just impaling people. Um, yeah, you just had to deal with like, like Hellion and Empress pretty quickly, though. I, I feel like cataphracts don't need to start on the field. I feel like they need to like show up as reinforcements, like at the edge, and then like catch the back line. Mm. That's that's just like how I feel because like I don't think that they're. I know that they're like. Uh, uh, I guess they're not. They're supposed to be frontliners, but like I feel like they're more skirmishers. Like they just need to show up and get a dude and run away. Like you know what I mean? Like harassing. They're like harassing units because you know they're super fast. But I don't. I don't think they have too much HP. I don't. I don't have the the book in front of me. But um, it always just feels like I, I show up, I swing an attack, and then immediately like the melee character just melts my face, or somebody <laughs> just shoots me and I'm just dead. <laughs> it does have 15 HP. Um, but like it does like it has. Um, I think it's lunge or impale or trample or whatever it's called that makes it like gives it the ability to move. Um, yeah. So it can move like. 16 spaces in a turn so it's certainly got the True. speed to do something like that yeah maybe it's just bad luck <laughs> yeah <laughs> see this dude zip across the field he's pulling a duke that's probably what it is right he just eats fire like <laughs> oh yeah he's the duke of this unit <laughs> yeah he's the duke of this unit <laughs> you know I-, I guess yeah he ate up a lot of damage that would have probably gone to uh the the uh you know the the defender the the demolisher but yeah yeah true so yeah that was the combat going back and forth uh you were able to take out the bombard the rainmaker uh the cataphract went down uh and the demolisher called for backup so one of the things that's been going on is the uh what's been lovingly called the stf uh the <laughs> the shit talk frequency which is what I've been using so everyone can shit talk everyone else as you would normally in a combat situation in any other game. I just had to justify yeah. it in a mech game. I would say, no, I think canonically from the source material of mech anime, there's always just like a frequency <laughs> where the enemy forces and like your forces, like your ally forces could talk to you. Like for some reason, everybody just has like this open comms that like they're able to just talk shit to each other, right? They're always like, you know, yelling at each other through their screens every time, you know what exactly. I mean? Like, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, I think, I didn't I think re- that's just the rule. That's just the rule of combat now. This is the ST- STF. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I didn't get to reveal this in-game, because um, I didn't find like, a good moment for it, but I was going to give it like an actual practical name, but everyone just calls it the shit talk frequency. Like, it was going to be like yeah. special tactics frequency universal or something like that, but everyone just calls it the shit talk frequency. Yeah, it would be like S T F. Yeah, it would be like frequency T for something, and then S. I don't know. If you guys, if you guys have any ideas for the S T F, then for like to give it like a real acronym. Yeah, you can give it a better one. Yeah. Or yeah, you know what I mean. Like that would be good, Uh, because you know. It could just be like the service technician frequency, where it's just like that generic (laughs) open comms that like all all mix can just like you know plug into you and just be like hey yeah it's just up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh he did call for backup he called on the sdf um and then he called in so he called in a couple of aces and an assault 
uh, and this assault was in a lead. And up until this point, I was doing all like sorts of wacky voices for these guys. Uh, but the three that showed up here, they were far more serious. There weren't as many <laughs> quips from these guys. True. The assault especially. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which I just wanted to show that these guys were more serious and more determined. Uh, as was apparent, because when they first came in, they started attacking one of the conduits. Um, and over time, like, you were getting messages back from Agent Holly Atro, your sort of connection to Union, on the progress that was going on with this program. Uh, they mentioned how the, the head scientist who originally suggested just blowing the whole thing up uh, got knocked out because someone swung a chair at him. Yeah, yeah, he was like, no, you have to destroy it, and like, bang! Now I'm the head scientist. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they were working on that still. Um, but then as these guys show up and blow up one of the conduits, uh, Holly sends you a message saying that there's something going on underneath the surface of the moon at this point. And then as the, en as the round ended, uh, like these crystal structures sort of burst up out of the ground, letting off these electrical... Uh, dangerous areas next to them mm -hmm. yeah which, which yeah i mean it, it was cool i was surprised you didn't do i didn't surprise you didn't bring in the dude sooner because i was thinking that like i don't know if you had it set to like a, a turn was it a turn or a round, um sorry? i th yeah i think originally what i was going for is maybe like a round thing i think they came in on like round three maybe mm -hmm. i think that was what my original plan was i maybe could have bumped them in earlier because I wanted yeah. things to sort of escalate in a way, but the fight was going... I mean, like, yeah, like, the end of round two, I think it was, is where it was just the demolisher that was left. And then yeah. I kind of... And then I brought the backup in, and then I started accelerating the stages on the map, because the map itself had multiple stages I wanted to go through. Yeah, but it felt like they came in a little bit too late, in my opinion. Mostly just because, like, when they showed up, I wasn't too afraid. I was mostly just, like, trying to keep it... Because, like, at that point, I don't think that... Like, cause we we they showed up and the demolisher was pretty much dealt with. I'm, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. If they had showed up one turn earlier and we still had the demolisher to deal with, like, that could have gave us a little bit. Uh, that could have made us sweat a little bit more. But we were like running really fine <laughs> just because of our luck. Yeah, I think one thing I'm still nervous with with Lancer is getting a gauge on when something is too difficult. Um, and that was part of why I didn't bring them in sooner, because I was like, is that going to be too much if I put them all together at once? But by the end of round two, it was clear that that would have been yeah. fine. But, like, I think that, like, so, I was, like, Duke was fine. Like, Duke could have probably handled anybody who showed up for, like, a turn, right? Yeah. Like, he was, he was already in position, and basically, like, he was the the first thing I guess they would have shot at or well one of them you guys would have started targeting the other things right it would have put the pressure on us to kind of not even like maybe peel away from the defender just so you know there's a little bit more uh, bodies in the way of you know uh, the bad guys destroying the stuff and then you know it would have been more of like now everyone's moving to the all the all of us are moving to the center while all the bad guys are still around their peripheries because now you know the jets are super fast the fender doesn't have to move but everybody has to move like more into the map and uh, try and deal with it or like at least cross the map so i, I don't know it, it just it just felt like just won't like i think we had we were lucky and you, you we were lucky and you also delayed your reinforcements for one turn so like that fight was like not like very very in our favor yeah <laughs> I should say. yeah um i think in the future i'm just going to throw stuff at the players basically because like retreat's always an option i just i just have to get yeah. over the hump of like i th i feel like that's probably a thing in every maybe maybe it's just for me like that's been a thing in every new game that i played um i certainly remember distinctly being a thing in starfinder where mm. i want to throw something at the players but i don't know if it's too difficult so yeah. i might like scale it back or do something like that yeah for sure and you should have i think you could have put like four uh grunts at us for the uh the, the four rocket grunts at us i think that would have been like kind of cool um because then you know duke poor duke would probably would have died but like, <laughs> it's like you know duke would have duke would have like you know there would have been precedent for duke to press the i gotta shoot all my rockets button 
a little bit sooner. And yeah. then I would have, <laughs> you know what I mean? He would have noticed like, oh, wait, these are all grunts. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I would have suspected there would have been grunts if you put a whole bunch of the same unit mm. out onto the battlefield. Because then it would be like, oh, I mean, Ramon, obviously GM's Lancer being like, you know, four grunts equals one combatant. So I'm like, oh, they must be grunts. Um, and if you had spaced them out across the map, that would have been, that would have been interesting for me because you know my whole job is to get to the back lines and you know deal with all of those long range units with my big old pointy stick so yeah that's a fair point um yeah yeah I, I think i just need to trust that the players can handle the like difficult stuff if i throw it at them um yeah, yeah. and yeah. and like if um you know uh ooh, i forget um the the mech free shooter so I, yeah if free shooter was in the fight too i think it would have given her uh, given uh that player some more options to, oh yeah you know, yeah yeah to, to to attack and stuff like that too right yeah if, if free shooter was here this fight would be like way over way faster because <laughs> you'd have like another long range option free shooter would have shot that dude straight in the face and just been <laughs> like oh yeah here take this crit <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> here take this 20 damage all right. Okay. Bye. <laughs> see, you. see you later, chump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. That would have that would have certainly gone a different direction. Um. So yeah, like these crystalline structures are starting to pop out, but around this time is when something very unexpected happened. Although in retrospect, I should have seen it coming. We talked about it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've been into specifics. Um, so, as our, I guess our Lancer listeners know, uh, while your mech can get damaged by damage, there's also heat you have to worry about, and overheating your mech, and having to deal with the consequences of overheating your mech, one of which, that you have a 1 in 36 chance of getting, is a, um, a, an irreversible reactor meltdown. <laughs> Yeah, like all good, you know, sci-fi mechs, uh, they're powered by n nuclear fusion reactors. So, like, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, when you push that system, you could get a meltdown, and then it's like, you know, kaboom city. Uh, which, which, which Empress happens. was uh, on the on the way to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, which I thought was hilarious, and um, I love that the fact that. All the players were like, like, you know, we rolled it and we're like, oh my god, right? And then we're like, wait, this is like the best opportunity. We can kill the entire map. <laughs> we yeah. Can get everybody in position. <laughs> yeah, you. Um, so what ended up happening is Hellion, like, dragged uh, Empress's mech over into a more tactical position. Um, obviously, the meltdown was going to happen at the end of Empress's turn. So, with just some good turn positioning, uh, you were able to blow up Empress's mech. Empress ejected, by the way, just to be clear. Uh, and then the mech blew up, and it took out one of these aces. Yeah, which was super fun um, to, get to have that happen. <laughs> the pilot was so confused, just sees you dragging this mech towards him, and is like, what the hell are they doing? <laughs> why, did you, why did you just leave that mech? Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, where are the warning signs going up? I'm like, oh, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> and then, boom. Nuclear launch detected. Like, <laughs> jeez, man. Yeah, that was that was pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, it's one of the cool things about I love about Lancer. I love that your mech, on top of you know just being a powerhouse with like all these like weapons and, and bristling systems uh, bristling weapons and like systems and stuff that you know you're still you still like are a walking nuke exactly so you know you know and like self-destruct is like it's an action that you can take so you could just use your mech to blow up whatever which i think would be cool i, I feel like i want to have a scenario where that's like what you want to do like th that's the whole point it's like like maybe it's not like you know uh, actually, no, I think we, we did pull that off when, uh, I think it was the blue, when you guys went to the blue horizon and, uh, you went through that heist mm. and you stole that data. Uh, I think at the end we, we narrated saying that like, yeah, you, you all like, you know, 
ejected from your mechs and were able to like fly into like like a stealth cruiser or something that's like coming to pick you up or a stealth ship and uh, you just to cover your tracks you guys blew up your mechs on the on the, <laughs> the platform which is you know horrendous because you know a bunch of nuclear explosions goes off in one place but um i would like to have a mission where you know you guys would have to cross the map but it's because like you have to get there and blow up your mech <laughs> like <laughs> it's the only way <laughs> that would be a, so like yeah. so it's my job to blow destroy your mech completely before you could get to the other side uh and it's your job to survive the entire time so i think that'll be kind of cool i'll make the lap the map, map like super long too so it's like really hard <laughs> to get to where you want to blow up yeah yeah uh <laughs> that would be interesting try to survive so you can explode yeah, try to survive so that you could die. Yeah, that's how it is. <laughs> well, uh, hopefully you eject. Die, cause, yeah, yeah. Unless you're uh, that cool, uh, I guess. <laughs> or unless you're brave. a bunch of dukes. Yeah, unless you're a bunch <laughs> of dukes, and then you know, you just like a clone of you somewhere. Who's oh, then you're to fine. The mantle. Yeah, then you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I took out that ace. The other one went down, um, and then there was just the one assault left. Uh, and yeah. it's a good thing he had a couple of structures because he was getting attacked by Duke and Hellion at this point. Yeah. Actually, I think that's how the first Duke died. Yeah. <laughs> how? It was just like a very serious situation. And uh, the bad guy was going to like, I, I think my mech was going to blow up anyway. And, uh, you know, there wasn't enough time for me to get in position or like to be ineffective. And my teammates were going to like eat it. So Duke was just like, all right, I guess this is it. And just like, you know, uh, you know, just kind of jumped onto the mech and like exploded. Like it, the, the, his reactor blew, but he didn't eject because I wanted to do as much damage to this thing as possible to make sure like everyone survived. So that's, I guess, when like Duke's like self-sacrificing nature kind of developed as like a character. And then it was like, oh, yeah, I guess I could just clone myself. So then I just cloned myself. <laughs> And that's, I think that's how Duke, the, the whole Duke saga kind of started. You Wait, eject is like a quick action. You could have... Yeah, but but I needed to get... I had to cross the map, dog. Like, okay, fair like, enough. <laughs> I needed to get there. It was it was like do or die. Uh, and I thought that the dying thing was pretty cool. So and we had this whole <laughs> thing where like... Because I was running like an Atlas, right? And like that thing doesn't have any like like uh, uh heat capacity or any uh, like it's just really bad at that kind of stuff right so and uh i think it had a moment too where because he had the terashima blade and uh terashima blade re like records all of like the past um battles of its previous owners so then it's like the i think we talked i i, I think we had like a narrative scene where uh the like the next duke in line went and uh picked up the Terashima blade from the, its creator and was like, oh, I don't know if I can live up to this blade because, you know, the previous Duke was so cool. <laughs> it was oh. like, and I was like, oh, cool. And then now there's like, you know, possibly 14 Dukes because uh, Duke Prime, I guess, or I guess it would be 13 Dukes because Duke Prime would be number one. <laughs> I need to get the League of Dukes together. That'd be such a good campaign. Man! <laughs> <laughs> I'd play a duke. I should, I should make a bunch of dukes and then make you guys play my character. Yeah, man. <laughs> Making these pre-gen characters was actually pretty fun. Um, especially because I, I found a thing that had like a whole bunch of like sci-fi profile pictures that were just perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Yeah, that was pretty good. Oh man. I, I mean, all right. Well, we'll we'll shelve the duke saga for later. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So yeah, the assault was left, and what I was trying to do with that was trying to decide like what was more important to this guy, blowing up these conduits, which was clearly what they were here for, or dealing with the players, and like clearly outnumbered, not going to have much of a chance to escape between everyone that was here, so just did what he could to keep shooting at these things, which made the planet more angry, it was kind of releasing energy from these... Uh, these crystalline conduits that appeared, but you were able to take them down. Uh, and then eventually you were able to deliver the computer message into the conduits after it had one last big electrical energy burst, mm -hmm. which you always do like a quick agility check to deal with. Yeah, for sure. 
I think I would have given the players. I just like speaking off the top of my head. Um, I think I would have given the players the uh, ability to eat damage from like let's say like he did like the person attacked and they did roll like a hit. I would give players the opportunity to be like, do you want to absorb this hit if it's like, you know, they were adjacent to the tower? Ooh, for some reason? yeah, that would have been. Because then yeah. it was like, yeah, yeah. you know, that thing did like guarantee like 10 damage or something. So it's like, listen, do you want, how, 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 you know, how do you want to play this? Like, do you want the, the tower to get damaged and possibly destroyed? Or do you want, or the conduit? Or do you want to eat this damage? Because it's always like giving the players the options to like, you know, uh, how, how much, given the like, like how you want to tell the story, right? Mm hmm. He definitely would have jumped in the way, I think, but uh, that's just how he is. Yeah, I hadn't thought of just giving that option. Yeah, I think next maybe next time I do something that has like an actual thing you're trying to protect. Um, I hadn't thought of that as something you can use for your reaction. That would have been a cool idea. Um, although, like the assault only could like destroy them very quickly when it had its high impact rounds, but those got destroyed because it got structured. Uh, it was good for us. Yes, it was very good for you. <laughs> uh, there was a different stage planned for the map, um, which would have been based on how many of these things got destroyed um, that I didn't necessarily get to, but I like the idea of it, so I might save it for another combat later. Yeah. And then, yeah, you were able to deal with this assault guy um, in some post-combat description and stuff, you were able to discover that he was in communication with someone on the surface of the planet, uh, but you don't necessarily know who or why just yet. Because uh, this might become a bit of an ongoing thing. We were talking about it off screen. I was talking about I was talking about it with people off screen and uh, might have to actually just go to like a meeting or something with the rest of them and figure that out if we want to do that. But mm. yeah, this might be a thing. I did want to do like a campaign on this planet that's newly joining Union. I had some vague ideas of what could be certain things and tasks and missions you need to deal with that were basically just like ideas I had for this that I didn't follow through on because I went with this one. Mm. Um, and yeah, it could be a continuation of the Iron Titan storyline, which I just kind of randomly generated. I hope it's not being used for something else already. I mean, I think it's it's Iron Titan sub lunar. I think yeah. that's exactly what the 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 limited series is called. Yeah, uh, my intent was for sub lunar to be this moon arc, and then something else for when you're on the actual planet. Yeah, well, I think that yeah, because you can just rename the mission, right? The mission is sub lunar, right? Yeah. So, um, but uh, yeah, and then you could like name it something else. I think it would be cool to do a limited series, maybe like not like a uh a weekly campaign like i don't think it'll series, be that that's, yeah yeah but <laughs> that's too much definitely for me. like yeah well, maybe like once a month once every couple of months because i think lancer's kind of good like that because the mission like every combat every it's just like you know so um discreet right like every section you could break it up to being like combat narrative opening right like the setup then it's like you know moving on that kind of deal so as long as like you can finish whatever you're doing in that that time frame like that encounter or that narrative section then you could just stop right there it's kind of like a like an episode right mm -hmm. yeah i think i normally think of lancer i guess scenarios in like episodes like in a tv show that's the way the way i think about it yeah uh, that's just like, what i'm aiming you know, for yeah or like a you know versus like a continuous narrative like i would say like D, &D or um pathfinder is mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's kind of what I'm going to aim for. I have some ideas for characters. Um, and <laughs> last time I made a whole bunch of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure references, but now I'm going to make a whole bunch of Sailor Moon references. <laughs> Perfect. We should fight a squad of Sailor Moon gals. I think that would be really good. <laughs> like, that would be the f that would be like the fun next enemy. It's just like the Sailor Squad, except like you know they're they're the bad guys <laughs> no, just... but then like they but then like they're like they think that they're the good guys <laughs> i do also um because we've talked to a bunch of people about all their third party stuff so i got like a ton of lcp files from everyone we've talked to so i've got like a million things i could use that i didn't yeah. want to use because i wanted to keep it like i wanted to just do core stuff for this part but now that yeah. we're opening things up 
I was gonna say, I definitely want to use uh, systems from um, Shaka's game, so mm -hmm. I, I kind of miss it because, like, I kind of want to rebuild uh, the Duke I ran for uh, that one shot he, uh, Shaka ran for us. So um, I, I, I just, just want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I miss the uh, the Groot slang. I don't know if it's an NPC like that, but I like that big old snake robot. It's true, it's true. I think that you could cobble something together or just tell Shaka to make... Shaka, are you listening? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta make a uh, Groot Slang NPC. I'm sure uh, there's one already that I'm just not remembering. Uh, probably. Or you could probably put it together. Like I, that, that's, a, that's the thing. It's like I, I think that you can just... Even if you wanted to just take like the actual systems and stuff like that and just run it, I think you could and just like make the... Instead of rolling... You just you just take the average. That's usually what makes sense to me. Yeah. And um, if not, I could always just like give something certain numbers and abilities, and then just say it's shaped like a certain thing. <laughs> this is a big snake with a gun. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Groot slaying sniper combo though. That was really fun. But yeah, that was oh, the that, that was the game. Um, Again, there were some things that I wanted to do that didn't get to. Um, there were I did I could have made the combat a bit more difficult, but everything that I can think of is just something that's like, well, I can very easily improve that. But the game was fun. Yeah. Okay. Um, we did also want to talk about Tim's uh, Pathfinder game because there were a couple of big uh, narrative moments in that one. Not too much combat in that. Uh, yeah. last Pathfinder game. Uh, but switching gears, there were some significant uh, story elements there. We had just rescued Nurb, who is Bren's sister, who's... <laughs> I guess their parents are running out of names. <laughs> yeah, because Bren's Bren has this huge family full of all sorts of characters. Yeah. But uh, Nurb is always... Uh, I think... Uh, Bren is Nerb's favorite brother, I guess, so that she takes after him the most. And apparently, Nerb has like good stats, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, was able to hold her own uh, in some sticky situations. So yeah, yeah that was kind of cool. There was like a brief uh, ambush from a couple of basilisks in the dark, and Nerb was able to help, like, use wild empathy to calm them down. So Teeks was like, "Oh, future druid." He's like, hey, kid, do you want a job? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I could be your big sister. I never had a sister before. <laughs> oh, gosh, Tease would be so into that. Um, I guess we should briefly say, so this is a continuation from a Lost Mine of uh, Pathfinder 2E conversion of Lost Mine of Fandelver. Uh, this is sort of after that story. Uh, we've yeah. got Teeks the Druid, Silrona the Wizard, uh, Bren the... Uh, Monk Ranger, Phalum the Fighter, and Cabo uh, Barbarian. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it's. I think Tim specifically called this arc the un unintended consequences, mm -hmm. which we call the unintim did consequences. <laughs> <laughs> You're really stretching that we there, but. <laughs> It's it's mostly me. And I just say it enough until everybody's on board. <laughs> you did. I think I think at one point I got was it Tim that said it. Somebody said it, and I was like, yes. <laughs> you did get me to say Tim Delvers. So. Yeah, you know. So it's just good, man. Like I don't know. <laughs> I mostly do it out of love. Like. <laughs> oh no, I I know. Um, so yeah, we did get ambushed by some basilisks, but we got out of there with Nerb's help. Uh, and then we got back to the Ravenshade family home, uh, where there was some discussion back and forth and trying to figure out, like, why Nerb left in the first place and not wanting to give away all the details and some details, uh, slipping out. Yeah. Uh, after there was friends a big parents came kerfuffle. back. Yeah. Yeah, there was a big kerfuffle and there was a big argument. You ever think of like, you know, a big family just yelling in the kitchen? Mm -hmm. That's like literally what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was yelling. The dad was finding out about secret boyfriends. Everybody was getting embarrassed. 
and you know and then there was just like a bunch of randos in their house you know what i mean yeah. like you know <laughs> so you know like it's christmas it's kind of it's kind of that winter time you know it's like christmas you, you know there's a bunch of random people in your house and there's a big family argument and you're like should i leave uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah teeks just like did pest form and snuck out the window <laughs> Yeah, I think we all tried to, like, interact with the family, but it was just, like, not happening. So no. we're like, what do we do? I guess we should leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Kavo and Silrona were already outside. Um, Bren was in there and mentioned how proud he was of Nerb, but that didn't really help. And then Teeks tried to help, but made things worse by revealing the whole kidnapping and danger thing. So she was just like, okay, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, Falum was just... <laughs> taking samples of everyone's breakfast as they were leaving. I think Cephalum ate everyone's breakfast while everybody was arguing. That's <laughs> That was what's happening. Uh, <laughs> He's got to eat. He's the wall. He's the shield for the team. He's the shield for the team. <laughs> He's like he's like basically second in line if Cable ever goes down. Like It's like, Fallon protect us. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Like Cavo, Cavo's like our, our our problem solver, but Fallon Fallon's like the like I was talking to who was I talking to about StarCraft two? I was talking to, I think I was talking to Paige about StarCraft two about how like I used to play Zerglings and you'd run like the bomb Zerglings and the regular Zerglings, but you you would mass both of them, but then you use like a bunch of Zerglings because they take up so much like area to like hold people in place so you can push the bombs at them it's like that's kind of how Fallon is like Fallon just like gets in the way and then like you know our man our man with the pickaxe just like shows like, it's like he's he's damaged here Fallon holds him in place and 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 uh Cable just you know crashes into them that's the, that's the that's the one two combo exactly yeah, all those Marshall guys, they go up there and they do all the big stuff. Us us casters, we chill in the back and, uh, you know, bide our time. Cool. All cool. Yo, like. Honestly, I don't even move anymore. <laughs> like, <laughs> what's the move action? <laughs> Tim's like, put me on the map. And I was like, all right, I cast magic missile. <laughs> it's like a, a hundred something range. Doesn't even need line of sight. Just works. And then I move on. My, my turns are like the quickest turns <laughs> for me. <laughs> Caster. Well, I guess I shoot magic missile. Yeah, Move man. On. Wizard powers. I, that gimmick's gonna run out eventually. Like, yeah, it might be soon. <laughs> it might be soon, yeah. For the, 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 you know, the revelations that happened. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I think that pretty much what happened. I, I'm not sure how the party decided that we needed to go to. Um, I forget the location. So yeah, well, I mean, after Bren just pretty much took fault for everything and then got slapped by his brothers, um, Teeks had wrote a message to her father, and then she... This is a spell that I found out I could do. I don't know if it's new or if I just never saw it before, but Animal Messenger, where you can tie something to an animal and send it to a specific person or location. So she had to, like, go back in the house. Well, she had to ask the brothers for help. Um, and they helped her get some paper and quills so she could write a note to her father. Um, and then afterwards, we were sort of having a discussion on, like, these dragon cultists knew about Bren's family and knew how to find them. Um, so Teeks was a little worried about her father. Uh, Kavo's village is, like, way far off, and Thalum's from, like, a crew that's kind of disappeared, but Teeks was worried about her family. Uh, yeah. So she wanted to go up to uh, the area around Luskin to check on her father. Uh, so yeah, we basically just set off from there. We did some traveling. Um, we had to cut through the city of Luskin because her actual, like where they actually live is just north of it. Um, and then when <laughs> we got there, uh, we saw Henrik Navis, Teeks' father, uh, the coolest seafaring guy, apparently. Uh, Fallon was yeah. super impressed. Yeah, everybody was like, this dude fucks, right? Like, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Uh, I think it was it was probably Chivi that said, this guy definitely smokes his own chicken nuggets. And I don't know how we yeah. got there. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, we're like, damn, man, this guy's the coolest. And he's like, hey, do you want some, like, good alcohol and a cigar? And we're like, damn, man, you're really dadding up the place. Yeah. <laughs> He gave Teeks a real big hug, uh, which was which was nice. <laughs> uh, mentioned that uh, something to do with like the neighbors, the Winstons, 
who he wanted to get some uh, apples. He wanted to get some produce from. And also yeah. mentioned that their son had a crush on Teeks, which was like a new thing to me. And I was like, ooh, boy. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to last. Although it I might, because again, Teeks was supposed to be like a gremlin, but then she became the team mom, so. Well, I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think it's just like, you know, Teeks just needed like some direction, right? Like she didn't get it in her hometown, so like she just had to leave. And then she's like, oh yeah, wait, I can just not be a gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, that's mostly you, like, Calvin, like, you yeah. can't actually be You're a dick, right. so. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it happened well, well, again, well. and I'll, I'll tell you when I, when I, because I always tell you about stuff that happens on USB, I'll tell you about that after. <laughs> oh, <my gosh. laughs> uh, so, yeah, while, while there, uh, while everyone was making themselves comfortable, Teeks did confront her father because way back when, she talked to a golden elf statue that could answer any question truthfully, and she asked basically where her mother was, and the statue said, where your father left her. Uh, and this was like multiple sessions ago, this was ages ago, but I kept hanging on to that because I was like, I want an answer to that. And I didn't Dude, get one. I, wonder if Tim, I don't think Tim even like knew, right? Like that was such a good GM answer. Like, you know what it's, I mean? Like, I'm very I'm jealous sure he of it. might have thought about it. Yeah, that was so good. That was like, that was like a, like, he just like left, I, I don't know, he just like gave you just the littlest crumb. You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I bet Tim had no fucking clue. <laughs> like, like in the moment, it was like so good, but like, obviously, like, thinking about it, it's like, that's such a good GM man. So just be like, oh yeah, your dad knows. And you're like, oh fuck, I gotta go see my dad. Yeah. Yeah. And then it insinuates so much. Like, what do you mean, her? <laughs> Killing me here, Tim. Fuck. And then, yeah, Tim. Making us all look bad over here. Jesus. <laughs> right? Because she's in there, like, she's prying for answers, and he's just, like, he doesn't want to tell her anything because he doesn't want Teeks to get involved with a sea hag and a sea hag coven. <laughs> Which is fair, but then Teeks is like, but I have all these magic things and I sort of been a bit of a gremlin. <laughs> I want I also want to have a relationship with my other parent. <laughs> right? It's it's cool cuz it's coming off of like Brennan, his big ass family. It's like he's like you know, Teeks is like, "Why can't I have a big ass family?" <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. uh, it was it was such a good I'm really glad those things kind of fell into place in the same session. Honestly, like I think that like Tim's running a crazy good game yes. and it's just like what what the fuck <laughs> like <laughs> I, can't, I can never like manage all these interpersonal relationships <laughs> it just it just feels like he just like has really solid fucking NPC characters that were like I really truly believe all these people are real like it's yeah. it's, it's ridiculous <laughs> Yeah, that was it's yeah. it's really I, I I'm really enjoying Tim's NPCs. Yeah, man, the man cast the spell real good. Like, I think we're also really good participants in the 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 whole, uh, um, I guess, uh, role playing. Mm -hmm. But uh, still, it's just like what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good group. Um, it's just there's something so nice about playing with a good group. Yeah. Yeah, Not that I know that anything different, to be honest, because every group I play with, there's always something that I'm like, oh my god, I love this group, I love this game so much. <laughs> yeah, it really gives you hope for the world. <laughs> like, yeah. Maybe everyone's just kind of good. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're all chilling at uh, Teague's dad's house, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I mean, at this point, like, I think Selrona was just like, not... I mean, like, someone was there, but, like, it just didn't feel, like, right to interact with anybody. Like, <laughs> like yeah, he was I chilling. was like, yeah, I think it was cool because, like, you know, uh, it was kind of like watching, like, a daytime TV show <laughs> where, like, you and Tim were just, like, going off about how, like, you know, no, I'm your dad. You should listen to me. <laughs> like, Tim's just, uh, like, you know, so everyone's just, like, chilling, like, eating popcorn. I think uh, we were having, like, lots of technical difficulties, too, which is, like, also you know, unfortunate. Yeah, but... Uh, you know, just kind of, but like the audio was working, so we were able to just kind of be a part of the story. And, um, you know, I just felt like I, I just, I know Sarona sort of just, I, I know I didn't want to get in the way, but I was just like so engaged of like what the fuck is happening. 
<laughs> yeah, I had no idea what was happening. I was super nervous, and I know I like I threw something to Tim at one point because Teeks just like left, and she she said she was gonna go to the Winstons and get that produce that her father wanted, but she just like went into the water, and um, I don't know if I revealed this to the party, but she kind of just stopped resisting the call of the tags for a bit. She just kind of like let loose to see what would happen and she then she just got drawn into the ocean feeling like this warmth in it and i had no idea where that was going i was like i was super engaged in this moment but i i had no idea what was about to happen uh but it did draw her back just in time for something <laughs> something very dramatic to happen um going from her uh <laughs> uh <laughs> there was a there was another I don't, I, I, this this group likes to post a lot of funny stuff in chat. So there was um, there was broke is uh, like the broken woke thing, but it broke was like dark teaks and woke was dank teaks and actual result is <laughs> damp teaks. <laughs> damp teaks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <It's> nice. <laughs> but, but yeah, so Henrik is showing off his boat to Falum while the others are inside. Teaks is being drawn to something in the ocean. Uh, Fallon's just having a time talking about like his boat adventures after a few drinks. Um, and Teeks is being drawn back to basically where her home is on the shore. Uh, just in time to see... <laughs> just in time to see... This, ah, this was a whole thing. Because a figure appeared before anyone could react. This spindly man with mo a stack of hats on his head who put a gun to Henrik's head and said, imagine my surprise when I hear that Maram is his friends and one of those friends has family I've been ordered to kill. And that's when Silrona Maramis sees his nemesis from the cowboy dimension, Hi-Hat Harry. <laughs> ah, Hi-Hat Harry. Oh my God, I had no clue Tim <laughs> made up a rival, like a nemesis for me. Like I, like I know, I know because he asked me he asked me like, "Oh, what do you want to happen?" And I was like, "Yeah, so that doesn't really have any family or anything like that." So, I think that it would be fun to have like a cool wizard duel. <laughs> no, you know what I mean. But I did not expect <laughs> that one little line to lead to Teeks's dad getting shot. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was like, "Yo, what the fuck?" <laughs> and he's just like, "See you in the dust bowl," and then disappears. Um, and so here's the thing: when so when Ramon can't make it to sessions of this game. Basically, Silrona disappears to the cowboy dimension because he's a cowboy wizard, but he leaves behind, like, this horseshoe, which is sort of his anchor point to where he reappears again. But Hi-Hat Harry, he did the same thing with a very similar looking portal, but he was able to reach back through the portal and take back his own horseshoe. <laughs> which I thought was nuts. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that son crazy. of a bitch. <laughs> Goddamn Hi-Hat Harry. Like, that's that's a very dramatic, tense part of a story where something you've seen as normal in a certain way is suddenly flipped on its head by this other person that shows up and is clearly more powerful. Yeah, man, that was a bad band move. I was like, shit, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, you know, I, I, I definitely I think out of everyone, I've given Tim the least to work with. <laughs> like, I'm like, Sorona is a very simple character. He literally just is a cowboy and a wizard. <laughs> like, if anything, Silrona is just kind of like a gimmick. But, like, damn, I didn't expect to get Hi-Hat Harry out of it. Right. Uh, yeah, and, like, the picture Tim uses is so funny because he had, he had, like, he had just, like, a, a goblin. Uh, I think it was a hobgoblin. Yeah. With, like, a gun. Except that, like, he put, like, the Team Fortress 2 thing where you just put a bunch of hats on top of him. <laughs> And he also made like a wanted poster, but the wanted poster was like incorrect because it like had just one big hat, yeah. except like Hi Hat Harry actually just wears like 10 hats. <laughs> like, oh, it was like simultaneously like, you know, scary, thrill, it was like thrilling, and I was angry, and it was devastated, and I was laughing my ass <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of emotions. It was a lot of emotions, man. And, uh, holy. I, I think we were able to, you know, we, we rolled some, we were like, oh my God, we have to save uh, Teague's dad from, you know, he got, he got shot in the head. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God. 
I did get to do some so, stabilizing, um, so yeah. he's like alive for now, but might have will have some like long lasting injuries and is probably not gonna be doing very well for the next while. I don't know if he's gonna be conscious for a while. Yeah. So and now we have like a villain because I think we were like not like aimless, but we we're just kind of like wandering around. But I'm pretty sure like Tim just had Hi Hat Harry in his back pocket, just waiting to spring this <laughs> motherfucker, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Seemingly out of nowhere, and now we have a villain to go deal with. And the next leg is like we gotta get to the cowboy dimension. Uh, and it was kind of weird because he did he foreshadowed it, it because we didn't put together that like you know we we're being like tailed by some goblins. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and we just thought that like oh yeah, there's lots of goblins in the Sword Coast, right? But we did like mess up a whole bunch of them, so maybe they were just like trying to get some revenge right but we're too high level for them now right you know yeah. which makes sense because you know the as as you know the, the the stronger you are like the the less trouble you have on the road pretty much right so um i think it was just kind of like that i didn't think that there was another bad guy who was related to them and they were just spying on us that way and i was like that's how they know where the fuck we are because the goblins are uh. spying for hi-hat Whoa, yeah, I thought crazy. it was gonna be like the cultists, the dragon cultists we had to deal with. I didn't even click yeah. with these goblins because I just, I just, yeah, I just thought they were just like because we messed up their tower and everything, so they're just like living yeah. wherever, but they're avoiding yeah. us because we're too strong. Yeah, like I straight up thought that we're like the next leg was gonna be us beating up a dragon, right? Yeah, I was like, let's go beat up that dragon because we killed their cultists. But and still then, could be the man, the man, yeah, I know, but the man throws his hi hat, Harry. <laughs> Yo. Stop. I don't know if you joke. Yo, Hi-Hat should be working with, like, that black dragon. Oh, maybe the next, like, okay, Tim, like, you should just have us fight the <laughs> green dragon and the black dragon. <laughs> maybe in a couple levels. Uh, maybe <laughs> maybe after, like, you know, unintended consequences gets wrapped up. Because I think Hi-Hat was probably, like, a part of that. But, yeah, that definitely is something that should happen. It's us beating up a dr couple dragons. I think that would be a cool fight. Uh, it's. I mean, like, I'm also worried because, like, I don't think Sorona can handle fighting two dragons because he's, he's no. kind of a gimmick. <laughs> no. uh, <laughs> I know I can't. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, but it would be epic. Um, but yeah, dude, that was crazy. And then we just ended the session there. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> how how am I how am I ever supposed to top that as a GM? I don't understand. <laughs> I, I I don't know, man. <laughs> I it was like Tim Tim just started DMing, and I'm like thoroughly impressed with this man. I was like, fuck, uh, maybe I suck. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. This no, I'm just bad. My DM my DM stat spreads are just in different areas. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, this is again. I think because I, I talked about this a whole bunch on the last episode where I had Claire on, and you we were talking about their like first game. And they ran, like, this whole ghost story murder mystery thing. Um, and they made, like, a whole bunch of cool minis and stuff. And the way that things were being revealed was all in, like, these ghostly flashbacks as players were investigating. And I was like, that's super cool. And I never would have thought to do it. I don't know how, how many other people I know of who would have thought to do it. And that's something that I really like about just seeing people taking on this hobby. That's what I really like about doing this podcast. Because that's why we take a casual approach to GMing. <laughs> Because yeah. I love seeing play people just come in with their different ideas and doing things that, like, I wouldn't have done as a GM, but then I get to experience as a player or hear about. Mm -hmm. Fucking blew my mind, man. Yeah, man. Ugh. Tabletop yeah, RPGs, was... man. Never, never, I can never replace this. Like, I don't know what I would do. I don't know how I could get hype. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what, what is what is even fun? Like, what is fun? Right? <laughs> it's not tabletop RPGs, man. Like, you, you watch a movie or read a story, this? and it's just going to be that one thing um, that you have no control over. You play a video game, you have control over it. It's, it's limited by what's in the video game. But you play a tabletop RPG, and your only limit is as much as a group of some people can imagine. Yeah, basically. I'm just like, you know, team four to like three to four brains going at it. it's like yeah. a lot of stuff you can get up to but yeah, yeah. Uh, i think that was that was super cool tim's game was super fun your game was super fun um i haven't gm'd in a while i should probably <laughs> run something <laughs> christmas is coming i may i'll take some days off and maybe i'll work on something and uh 
you know, maybe I'll, I'll get a I'll get a game in here or there. Uh, but yeah, I should probably. You know what we should do? What? Maybe maybe I'll actually run Ineon again. I feel like I keep like every time I'm always like, yeah, I should run Ineon, and I never do it because I'm tired. <laughs> I, should, I should just get Ineon back together because like, you know, I, I kind of miss that place a little bit. Yeah. In my heart. I kind of miss Macy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of miss Macy too. I think it's time to bring those motherfuckers back. Uh, and uh, you know, I have, I have the, I have the vision. I have, I have like the next leg of it already done. I just literally like, I think I need to remember uh, all the voices and the peoples again. But I'll just go read my notes. Yes. Oh, well, I'm very excited for that. Uh, and we will for sure talk about it on here, uh, if that happens. And of course, for everybody out there who's listening, if you want to hear more about our future games or from. Um, other things that we other like people we may talk to about their you know games they're working on things that they're writing uh we did talk to vex recently about the in golden flame kickstarter which just finished recently um and did extremely well by the way yeah and i saw some art i saw some of the arts that were coming out on twitter and they're like yeah amazing so like very exciting uh very happy for vex like man I, i think it's uh super cool uh that uh you know this is getting done so yeah i i i wanted to do like a lancer home game like but with just our group i think maybe i'll do that series yeah. um so yeah definitely go below check out all the links to all the stuff all the people we've talked to um there's gonna be a link to the untold stories project channel uh so you might be able to go there and check out the lancer episode still but if it's not there it should be on their youtube channel soon um as well since we're in the shout out section basically <laughs> Um, if you want to see more of me, I'm there on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, there's the Starhaven game, which just wrapped up, which I'm very... I got super emotionally sad when I had a moment where I realized I'm not going to be playing that character again for a while. Uh, it just kind of hit me. Like I, didn't, I, don't think, I think I didn't even realize it. Um, but it was a very dramatic ending. We are going to have like a chat back sort of interview kind of thing. I think by the time this episode comes out, that would have been over. But you can check that out on their Twitch channel. Um... You can see me get into how I felt about the character and everything, and how I thought I wouldn't be able to play that character in Season 2. Because <laughs> I did something very stupid. <laughs> uh, additionally, on Tuesdays, there is the Gemstars Magical Girls Fantasy World game, uh, where <laughs> uh, we're basically all playing different flavors of Magic Girl, um, and apparently because I'm playing the red one, I've been made into the team leader. <laughs> That's how it is, man. You, you, you choose the color red, it's over, man. Till yeah. the till like the white one or the green one shows up. <laughs> That's how it is. Apparently. Uh so yeah. yeah. I... Your name's like Sailor Uranus or something. Like I forget what the other two Sailor Moon Scouts are named. Oh, but, Uranus uh, and Neptune. Yeah, yeah, until they show up. Like, oh know. man. <laughs> I would love a Uranus and Neptune in that game. I'd lose my mind. Those two are my favorite. Yeah, they're like the coolest. They're the coolest out of all of them. Except for uh, Jupiter. I think Jupiter still is my favorite. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All those, all I betrayed baddies, Jupiter. All those baddies. Yeah. All those baddies can like, you know, exist. I love them. They're like the best. Yeah. More of those guys in my life. I should just watch Sailor Moon. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> you should. I've been watching it. I'm on season five. It's really good. Uh <laughs> But yeah, that's uh, definitely go check out those games um, if you want to see me carrying the heavy burden of leadership again. I felt very similar to how Macy felt in our home game, where it's just like, oh gosh, there's so much decisions have to be made and there's going to be consequences and it's on me now. I just wanted to punch bad guys. (laughs) You know what? (laughs) To be fair, you always become the leader. You always become the mom. (laughs) Always. Yeah, that's what it... (laughs) (laughs) But like the problem I have is that uh, in in um, you know t- in uh, Tim Delver, it's like we don't have a leader. We're <laughs> we're, no, we're like they're like I think that's what Teagues needs to do. Teagues needs to become our leader, and I think that's that makes total sense to me. <laughs> like, that's like I think that should be Teagues' arc. Is like <laughs> oh no, that's too much responsibility. I got away from it in Starhaven, but now <laughs> I don't know if I can. Um, but yeah, and also they're doing a bunch of like one shots until the, through like the end of the year. So definitely go check out their stuff. They just did, um, Jurassic Park, 
and that was a whole, well, that was a whole fun thing. I didn't play in it, but I was just watching it, but that was really fun. Um, but I think that's everything. <laughs> This section always gets so long. I should probably stop interrupting you. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. <laughs> um, I do feel like I'm forgetting something, but I don't know what it is, so I'm just gonna assume I got everything. Yeah. If, if no, anything, wait. We'll our gaming streams. Oh my gosh, that's oh, what yeah. I was forgetting. Uh, the gaming streams are still going on. Uh, just finished um, Dead Space. And I finished Outer Worlds a while ago, so that means we're back with Mass Effect 2. Yeah, that's gonna be on Sundays. Uh, Batman's gonna continue to be on Thursdays. Um, once Arkham Knight is done, we'll play Gotham Knights, and then Skyrim on Friday forever, because Skyrim will last forever. Yeah, Skyrim, like, the sun will implode, and you're still, you didn't do everything in Skyrim. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, so yeah, check all that fun stuff out. And that's everything. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Alright, uh, Ramon, anything else you want to say before we head off? Duke forever. <laughs> All right. Well, for <laughs> for all of our um, I don't know what what should I say here for all of our mech piloting, magic casting GMs out there, and GMs and players out there, <laughs> just remember to keep on winning with dice, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.